So I have an important question to ask all of you. Are you Edison or are you Tesla? So today is all about problem solving and where we fit in on that problem solving spectrum. That's right, even when it comes to problem solving, the battle lines are drawn. So today we're gonna find out, are you Thomas Edison or are you Nikola Tesla? Are you Michelangelo or are you Leonardo da Vinci? I don't expect you to have the answer just yet, but by the end of this, you're definitely gonna have the answer. So like most things, the spectrum moves from left to right. So on the left side, you have adaptive problem solving, and on the right side, you have innovative problem solving. And somewhere in the middle, we have what's called a bridger. Now ideally, every person would be a bridger because it's right in the middle, and everybody's got a little bit of both, and they can bring everybody together, but that's you know the ideal state. So obviously we don't live in ideal states. The truth is, most companies rely and survive on both adaptive and innovative thinkers working together. You have to have both. You can't have only one or the other, and you can't have a company full of bridges in the middle because then it's a little wishy-washy. You got to have somebody bringing two sides together. So let's break them down. So the adaptive thinkers and problem solvers, they prefer order and discipline. They have well thought out solutions. Precision and methodology is kind of like their shtick. So that allows us to replicate all the things that they do. Now, the downside of adaptive thinkers is that they are typically ones that want to fit into a certain box. They color inside the lines and they focus on rules instead of solutions. Thomas Edison has a few aphorisms that kind of drive this point home. He said, invention is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. He saw one idea and he had one singular focus and he persisted and ran that sucker down until he figured out the solution. He also said, I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that don't work. Which means that in the pursuit of the light bulb, he failed 10,000 times, which is just another example of how ridiculous it is that adaptive thinkers will run down a problem until they find a solution. But the problem with this is, you know, he didn't really get to work on as many things as he probably could have if he saw some of his projects as being failures like they were instead of having to have a solution every single time. Thankfully, we have the light bulb, but who knows how much more we could have from Thomas Edison. And yes, I know he did more than just come up with a light bulb. In terms of art, think about Michelangelo. His attention to detail, his intricacy. Think of the Sistine Chapel. It took him three and a half years to paint the Sistine Chapel. We're talking about detailed planning and focus on one painting for almost four years. He also has arguably the, the most famous sculpture of all time, David, and that took him two years to carve something out of marble. Now, let's talk about the innovator side or the innovator thinker, or the innovator problem solver, if you will. They search for many solutions. They have no limits on their practical efforts and they create climates where people are just constantly testing out ideas. In theory, the innovator sounds great, but the cons are they kind of lose interest after they run out of ideas. They prefer to do their own thing and not work with others. And they live outside the rules, so it's kind of hard to make a structure that we can replicate. So that leads us to Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla basically invented everything we know today about electrical engineering in some way or another. He tackled every problem he could find, every single one. The problem is he wrote nothing down and we couldn't replicate any of his work. He took hundreds of secrets with him to the grave and it's it's amazing what could have been had he just wrote it down. I think one person actually asked him one time, you know, Nicola, are you going to write this down? And he said, nope, it's all right here, which in the moment was probably funny, but 100 years later, we probably wish he would wrote some stuff down. And unfortunately, with you know, the problem with a lot of innovators is he didn't finish a lot of the projects that he started. The same thing goes with Leonardo da Vinci. It's rumored that he started over 400 works of art and only finished 40 of them. That's a terrible completion rate. And he's one of the most famous people on the planet. He was a painter, a sculptor, anatomist, cartographer. He was even a military engineer. He tried to do everything until his attention changed to something else. Now, me personally, I'm definitely Tessa and I'm definitely da Vinci and I'm definitely an innovative problem solver and I try to do everything and I just try to tackle more and more problems and I'm, you know, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I don't really complete a lot of them. I just keep solving more and more problems. Something I'm definitely working on and with this kind of self-reflection, I need to be a little bit more adaptive. So you can see the pros and cons of both problem solving techniques and both way of thinking, especially in the midst of a quarter life crisis. Do you have a singular focus? Are you trying to fix one thing in your life? Or are you like me and you're trying to fix just about everything at the same time? So again, I ask you, are you Tesla or are you Edison? 
Are you Michelangelo or are you Da Vinci? Only you know the answer to that. Stay healthy, stay distanced, and welcome to the Valley of the Sun.